uh, even children can work with Postgres. And, uh, you know, the firstly, I need to say a bit about myself. My name is Tatiana, and I'm a CEO of uh, dBeaver. Uh, dBeaver is a UI tool for working with databases, and uh, it was created and born as an open source tool in 2011. It was like a lot of years ago. Uh, now we have like 8 million users, and you can find them in every country of the world. Um, so what we do is uh, database management and database administrative tools uh, where people can work with any kind of database. So why I'm talking about that? Because the biggest, and the, I mean not the biggest, but very big part of our community is the people who work with Debeaver and with Postgres. And they write queries, they do different um, administrative stuff and so on. And uh, what is even more interesting here that these people are not necessarily to be technical guys. We have more than like 35% of users who are not really know what is uh, SQL language. They consider database as the collection of the tables and uh, they live quite happily with that. And uh, the uh, question here is uh, how can we help them? Because no one really wants to write the queries or scripts for someone else. We want to make these people independent. We want these people to create this by themselves. And uh, it's where actually last year uh, appeared the very great thing because OpenAI appeared. And uh, you know, I think that you heard about OpenAI a lot during the last year. Like everyone at all conferences had a talk and maybe 10 talks or maybe all talks only about AI and uh, different language models because it actually it affects everything. And uh, uh, like people started to think that they can do uh, with AI any stuff. They can write articles, they can create images, they can write reviews, they can do their job uh, just with uh, creating re uh, right prompt with uh, AI. So today we will look at how good is AI actually for creating the queries. So, and firstly, the simple stuff that we can do is to try uh, ChatGPT. Everyone knows what is ChatGPT to create a query. So I did it for you, this experiment for you. I opened uh, ChatGPT and uh, write a request like, please write a SQL statement to show all invoices from Postgres. Uh, literally, I uh, didn't write please, but anyway. So as you can see, it helped me. And it created even two options. One of them is with uh, select asterisks from invoices and another one with a list of some columns. Good result. Most likely this kind of uh, select statements uh, will work. But you know, when we think about how to work with AI, in most cases we don't want to create the request like that. We don't want to create the request in a way, write a SQL statement to show all invoices. We want something like this, like show invoices and it shows you invoices. Nice? Nice. So I did it. I write show invoices. And unfortunately, it's too small because uh, right now ChatGPT is very talkative. It gave you a lot of, uh, it gives you a lot of comments. But you can see that actually the queries are the same. Even if uh, we add the, mm, if we switch to the like list of columns, we can see that for the second uh, case, it added uh, to us invoice date and total amount. Really nice. Our job is done. ChatGPT can create queries for you. Thank you, guys. My talk is ended. <laughs> OK, not, not now, not so fast. Because if we open the fresh conversation with ChatGPT and send something like this, like show all invoices, you can see the result. Uh, again, a lot of words there, but the conclusion is, no, I cannot show. I don't understand what you 
are asking me about. Why so? What is the difference? Actually, the difference is in context. Because context for the AI is a key. So what did we do at the first time? We firstly said, write a SQL statement to show all invoices from Postgres. And now AI knows that we want to get a SQL statements, not something, not some invoices. We want to have a, a SQL statement and we want to have it for Postgres, not for something else. And uh, right now, if you open ChatGPT, they don't have this screen with the capabilities. But in the past, they had. And they had this notice that remember uh, that ChatGPT remembers what user said. So that's how context was created. So it remembered our first request. And when we, after that, asked to show all invoices, it showed us the same select statement. So in this case, most likely uh, now we know how to work with that. We can do this by ourselves. The only thing is if we want to get the right select statement, if we want to have a complicated select statement with joint different tables and so on, we need to provide the right context. So what is the context for the SQL query? A lot of stuff. I mean, it's not only the database type like Postgres or MySQL or SQL Server or something like that. It's also a lot of additional metadata like database name, schema, tables, constraints, uh, names of columns, and so on. And the more complex our query, the more metadata we need. So, because you know, no one wants to have some abstract query. Most of people want to have the query that they, they can uh, just apply and get the result. And for all of this, we need all of this metadata. So are you ready to describe all of this stuff in the chat GPT to get your query? I don't think so. Yes, it's just impossible. It's much easier to learn the SQL language and write query by yourself than trying to explain it for the chat GPT. So, okay, now we are ready to end the talk. Unfortunately, ChatGPT cannot help us with uh, our mission. Okay, again, it's not so simple. Let's move forward. What can help us? Here, I took the example with OpenAI, but actually it's applicable to almost all publicly available language models. So we have OpenAI as a model in the center, but every model has different kind of interfaces. For OpenAI, it's a Bing, ChatGPT, and OpenAI API. So Bing is a browser solution, ChatGPT is a, also like a special website where you can ask your questions, but OpenAI is a special thing that you can integrate to your applications if you want. And uh, Comparing with Bing and ChatGPT, OpenAI is only one that is paid. But with OpenAI, you can achieve exactly what you need. So you can help your users. In our case, in Dbeaver, we use OpenAI API to close, like hide all of this stuff related to the creation, the context sending all of this information. So users don't need to care about that at all. They care only about the query. And uh, currently, in the Beaver, we have integration with three different AI engines. It's OpenAI, Azure OpenAI, that's actually almost the same as an OpenAI, but in Azure Cloud. And we also have a fresh, brand new Google Gemini. So they work if we are looking at them from the like technical perspective. Of course, they're a bit different, but they work very similar, especially for users. And uh, even the result that they provide, it's mostly like, I cannot say that it's the same. You can experiment with different ones, but the 
general process for all of them is very similar. So how they work? If you want to ask something from an AI engine, you firstly need to determine context, then write request, form prompt, and uh, get response to show the results. Just five simple steps uh, that will give you something in the end, or not. Why? Let's look at them a bit more closer. And we'll start from the context. The main thing that you have to remember about the context is that more information is better than less information. Then more information you will send to OpenAI, then better result you will get. Because uh, not all the data will be used uh, for the like final query, but sometimes you, it's, can, it's hard to predict what will be useful and what not. And uh, actually, uh, the number, the context is uh, uh, determined by the number of tokens that you can send to the AI model. And uh, what is tokens? Tokens is just a set of symbols. Uh, if we we'll just calculate it in average, uh, 1,000 words give us 750 tokens. Of course, it depends on words. If it's just like article, you can put more than one or like two to one uh, token. If it's very long word with the 34 uh, letters, then most likely it will be to two or even three different tokens. And here is important because as you can see, different models suggest us different options for the number of tokens. And uh, classical OpenAI GPT models uh, 3.5 and 4.0 uh, give us 16 and 32 tokens, so thousands of tokens. Just to give you some understanding of the numbers, I could say that the middle size Postgres database, not the enterprise level, you can send the whole schema with all constraint in uh, like 20,000 of tokens. So what it means that when you work with, for example, with Azure GPT-35 Turbo, most likely we will we'll be out of tokens. What does it mean? So it means that when you will send it, and if you'll try to send more tokens that it can apply, it will say, I'm out of token and won't return to you anything. So you have to be careful with that. And uh, uh, actually, in the beginning, like a year ago, when people just started experiment with AI model, it was very often error that people received that you are out of token because models were small, they accepted a small number of tokens, but now look at the uh, freshly announced Google Gemini. One million. I cannot even imagine the size of the database that can fit to this number. Sorry? Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so now when we know, uh, determine the, our context, we can move forward. And we can move to the very nice part about writing the request. Uh, actually, it's exactly what our user see. Because uh, user doesn't know anything about the context. He or she just creates the beautiful query. And uh, what is the great thing about AI is that you can create very humanably readable queries. I mean that you don't need to talk with AI like you talk with robots. I mean, we are not talking with robots every day, but anyway. <laughs> so you're just trying to talk with AI in the same way as you talk with your friend and with colleagues or, I don't know, uh, with some teacher. You don't need to formulate it 100% correctly. You don't need to be grammatically correct. You can write it in any language. And actually, it's very, very useful, especially if you work like in international company. 
when some field department is in, I don't know, in China and another part in Mexico. So they can create the uh, queries on what's like Chinese and get the same result that you will get. And it's really cool. So moreover, you can help AI to create the query that will work. Because as we will see further, it's not always that uh, so that AI works nice and gives us 100% correct answer. So you can help. You can say, use this table or give me the, uh, and the, the data from this uh, source. Or use joins if you know what joins are. And actually, if you played uh, with, for example, AI for picture drawing, you have some idea how to create the query. And it's very, very similar to how you create the query for uh, SQL uh, scripts. Because if you create the query for picture drawing, like draw the beaver, beaver sitting, and the beaver sitting in Mercedes, and it's a sunset, and uh, high resolution picture and uh, give me a best result uh, from the France, France coast or something like that. You will get a very strange picture in the end because it will try to uh, cut your sentence in parts and uh, each part will be drawn in some way. So don't do this. Do something like, uh, please draw me the beaver sitting in Mercedes on sunset on France coast. Like you give the full picture, the full uh, sentence that describe what you want to get in the end. And that exactly that you write about the query. Uh, I mean that if you need to get the report, or like, I want to combine the data about my customers and their purchases for the last year. That's exactly what, the kind, what kind of request is expected by AI. Not something like, um, give me all customers, join them with the tables, with the uh, um, accounts and their purchases and something else. No, don't do this. Try to talk with AI in the same way as you talk with the people. That's it. So, and actually that's where the people work ends. And now it's more kind of automatic work because here we form prompt. And I could say that uh, AI currently has two types of API. One of them is for single prompt and another one for the chat mode. In the, in the Beaver, we have both of them, so I can show you the differences. In a single simple prompt, we, uh, prompt, uh, we uh, form prompt through, uh, from four parts. It's a firstly context, all database metadata that we send. And uh, I could say that to mitigate the risk with these uh, too many tokens that I described, uh, the people just cut the metadata. So if we like too close to the uh, limit of tokens, we just remove all the other, all other parts. Always suggest choosing the part of the database that will be used for the uh, creation of the query. So after that, we send a human readable request and the give AI a task. In our uh, case, it will be create SQL statement. Quite obvious. What else can we ask? Yes, create SQL statement. And uh, because for single query API, API work like it's uh, complete the sentence, we need to give a beginning of the sentence. In our case, it will be start from the word select. So now our AI uh, model has a understandable prompt to work with. But if we work with the chat mode, it's a bit different. 
because in the chat mode, we first of all, we send the same context that we do for the single query. But the next stage is a bit different. Uh, at the first time, we also send a human readable request. But on the next stages, we send the whole conversation. Because unfortunately, we cannot trust AI memory. Sometimes they, it's remember. Sometimes it doesn't. You never know. So, and that's because why even in the, for single queries, we always send the context again, even if we are trying to request the same database again and again. Because after like third or fourth t uh, attempt, uh, AI can forget some parts for no reason. So it's better to send everything. And in case of chat, we send everything like the previous uh, request and the previous response that we got from the AI. And we actually even mark like, hey, it was the previous request and this part was your response last time and now it's a new request and so on. That helped AI to understand what we want from them. Then we again gave the task like create SQL statement and uh, comparing with uh, the single query, we don't need to give the first word. We can just say like, add comment because we are trying to talk with AI and we are waiting uh, for some comments from that side if we formulated something not well. So, and after we did all of that, we get response. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. And uh, uh, why we can get the negative response. Actually, there are, there are a list of different reasons. And uh, I really like this. I was wondering how I can get rid of this error. Actually, this is a screenshot from dbeaver GitHub ticket when we just firstly implemented that. So yes, sometimes people just don't understand what happened and why it uh, didn't work. And, uh, you know, there is a list of uh, different reasons on the slide, like, uh, and the first one is like, you do not have internet access. And if you think that it's a stupid reason, actually, it was a reason of this error on the slide. And it's not because the person was stupid. It was because uh, he was in a closed corporate environment. And the access to the OpenAI API was just closed. Uh, it was impossible to connect and it was impossible to get the result. So it could be obvious, but it wouldn't. Uh, so the next uh, thing these days is not so popular because AI engines became stronger, but it's still be that if you're trying to get some results from AI in the middle of working day on Wednesday, mm, you will need to wait. So, and uh, the next couple of things is about uh, your responsibility. You have to be sure that token that you use is correct and uh, that you paid for access to AI model. We have some free models for now, at least for example, Google Gemini right now is free. You can use it as much as you want. I don't know how long it will stay in this, uh, but right now it's free. But OpenAI API is, is not free. It has some trial, uh, like big enough to play with the technology, but not big to use it like regularly every day. And uh, yes, you can choose the wrong model. Uh, what does it mean? It's that, um, uh, for example, OpenAI suggests you very different models and not all of them can return you the SQL query. And uh, in this case, uh, the model just returns you, I don't know, I cannot do anything. And uh, again, you send too many tokens, we actually, uh, defeated this problem in the beaver just cutting the context but if you use like you create your own application that will work with 
AI API, remember that it makes sense. So let's move on. Even if everything is good and you received the right query, it doesn't guarantee anything. Because uh, sometimes, uh, even if you send the correct data, OpenAI using some, I don't know, knowledge, internal knowledge, it tries to create something beautiful. And uh, like in this case, you can see that in the script that AI created, uh, we have like red highlighted word description because this uh, column doesn't exist. Why OpenAI decided that it has to be there? No one knows. Because, you know, we sent the whole metadata, information about all columns, everything. But for some reason, if you have the table with the uh, films, you have to have description for this film. No any choices. So, yes. And uh, here is maybe the most philosophical uh, thing in this talk. Please be concentrated. So, yes. It's a very, very uh, well-known uh, citation from the ancient by, uh, time, but, you know, I don't have author here because I don't know who was that. If uh, we believe the internet, every big person in history talks something like that. Uh, and it's 100% correct when you work with uh, AI you need to ask the right question. You need to formulate it in the best way as possible to get the good result. And then, ta-da! Yes, you will get the result. It will show you the data and you actually don't need to do anything. You just created this qu the query like me, like the, like show me all uh, films released like rented on March 25 uh, and it returned me the results. So it looks like everything is good, but before we'll go further, a couple of important things. First of all, about the unobvious limitations. And uh, one of them is related to the number of tokens. Uh, that huge schemas with hundreds and thousands of tables. Actually, enterprises love this kind of databases. And uh, the, also the companies who prefer to not like create the database schema by themselves, but use some third party tools for that. They also have the same issue when the names of uh, tables uh, generated automatically and they can contain like sentences, hundreds of uh, letters. And uh, uh, when th both of these numbers are too big, uh, you will be out of tokens very quickly. The second point is uh, about analytical databases, because you know, uh, if we'll take the some classical analytical database, because of the structure of the data, it can be the table with hundreds or thousands of columns. And it will be the same story, like you will be out of tokens very quickly, just because your database or your table is too big. And of course, uh, you know, uh, AI works really well with uh, Postgres, for example, because Postgres exists forever, almost forever from 95, I, I think. But anyway, uh, there are a lot of documentations about that. And there are a lot of uh, understanding, like knowledge about how to create the queries. So AI knows it very well. But if you work with brand new database, maybe it's even fork of the Postgres, most likely AI knows nothing about this database and it can be hard, especially if they ha have a special language. Good example of that, Mongo, not a brand new database, but very specific, has a very specific language, script language uh, for querying. 
a year ago, I had this point in the presentation, so no SQL databases, not for AI. Now they are much better with no SQL databases as well, because someone trained them on that. But, you know, Mongo is quite popular. If you use something very rare, mm, I have some doubts that they will support it so quickly. So, a couple of words about the differences between single request uh, VS chat. Uh, first of all, first thing that you have to remember about single request that every request is brand new. Like, you cannot trust memory of AI, so you, AI consider it like a fresh uh, request. So it means that if you uh, formulated it not in a good way, you cannot just add some details. You will need to rewrite it completely or just trying to create the query by yourself in a better way. But at the same time, the query structure is fixed. Because you remember, it works uh, like completing the beginning. Like we started from start query from the word select. It means that if someone will try to generate, for example, delete statement, it will be impossible because delete statement cannot start from the word select. So it won't work. Uh, it's uh, less flexible, but more safe if you want to give it to some unexperienced users, for example. At the same time, chat mode is uh, more flexible. You can really talk with AI. You can say that, hey, you can try this, please add that, and so on. And it will just collect all this data and trying to apply it, uh, summarize everything to the final statement. And uh, the benefit of the chat mode is also that you can create any kind of queries. Insert statements, delete statements, anything that you need. It's not so safe, so be sure that you um, gave users the right permissions on the database level to avoid any kind of issues. And uh, I can try to show you really quickly how it works, I mean the differences between single request and chat. If it won't work, I'm sorry in advance, but at least I'll try. So we have Postgres. We have uh, some database and we will create this new uh, editor and uh, try to create the first statement. So, Oops, no connection. Okay, let's try to reconnect. Hmm, now I believe we have a connection. So, yes. So, let's look at the settings of AI first. You can see that we have uh, some API talking and I use uh, GPT 3.5 and 16K for that, and uh, I have a, a checkbox to execute uh, SQL immediately, just to not spend too much time on that. So, and uh, here I will ask to show all films rented on May 25, as uh, I had in my presentation. So we'll wait for that. And yes, you know, we have some comment. It's, it's my request, show all files rented on May. Then we have some uh, comment from AI. Like, we need to retrieve all films that were rented on May 25. To do this, blah, blah, blah. It tries to explain you everything that uh, he did and how he created this query. And as you can see, we have this issue with the description that doesn't exist. So, because of that, we said, okay, don't show description. Stupid way to avoid this error. Nice. 
wait for that. And uh, so, ta-da, we have a result. It worked. But you know what? We don't have actual rental date. We cannot check. Is it May 25 or not? Why? I don't know. Let's try to fix it. OK, we'll go here and say, like, I don't know, include rental date. So Ta-da! I'm not sure that it's what we expected because now we have like just two columns, not uh, like all of them that we wanted to have. So we can try to play further with that and uh, try to formulate the right uh, description to get the right result. Okay, let's try to do this in a chart. So we said like, Mm. Show all films released on May 25, 2005. So it didn't work because the date is uh, incorrect. Yes. So how can we fix it? Mm, we're trying to add some additional clues for him. Mm, we can say that uh, release so what I say I, I could add something like mm, release year 2005. No, it doesn't work. Okay, so uh, <laughs> let's try to reformulate the whole sentence. Like show all films. Um, set, uh, okay, okay, show, let, let's start from something like that. Show all films. Not a lot, not a lot, yeah. yes. We have, we can cal calculate how many rows we have here. Just 1,000, not a lot. So, uh, so yes. Yes, yes, he did, it. everything is correct. And now we say that, uh, okay, only include. Only include the, the, the films released on uh, May 25. Hmm? No, 
it doesn't work. So, uh, and actually it's, it's a different because when we're uh, trying to add some points, we need to uh, understand what kind of points we want to add to get the right uh, result. Sometimes it works nice, sometimes it works like, like this. So no any, like I don't try to defend the, some AI, AI model, but I can say that sometimes you can get it very easily. Sometimes a chart mode is more convenient, sometimes it's less. It depends. Let's return to our talk. And a couple more words that I wanted to add here. So where else can AI help? Actually, not a lot of areas, but they exist. It uh, can get you a general overview of the existing database schema, especially in a database, uh, in a chat mode. You can say something like, could you explain me this schema? And it will try to tell you like what tables you can find there, how they connect with each other. <laughs> So, and so on. Um, so, uh, sometimes, especially if you are not very experienced user or you need the additional information, you can use that. And uh, the same uh, stuff about the particular object. So, it could say with which other tables it's, uh, uh, the, your table is connected. Or maybe from where you received this view and so on. So, you know, for some people it can be useful. Yes, and uh, the, uh, the next point is about optimizing the queries. It's, uh, you know, I, I could say here that it's a dream to send your query that uh, runs with error to some magic tool, magic box, and the magic box returns you something beautiful. Uh, AI won't help you much, but sometimes it can give you like a good advice about what happens. And uh, the last point is that generate mock data through the insert statements. Actually, it's not like, please generate me some data with insert statements. No, you said like, could you add uh, this to my table? And it will generate you, uh, or even could you add 20 rows to my table? Yes. Yes. Uh, but again, it depends on the database and depends on complexity of your database. So sometimes work, sometimes not. But the worst th thing here that you saw the uh, speed of the AI response. So if you need to generate like hundreds of rows, you will firstly need to wait for the generating the script for that and then run it and it will be uh, like inserted one by one because it will be single inserts for each row. So for some cases, to, for test data, it can work, for some not, but yes, you can try to do that. So maybe the last important point here is uh, about security. We need to talk about that. And in the Beaver, especially for that, we showed this message like in order to perform completion, the Beaver will send your metadata to API. Uh, is it safe? Actually, actually, it's a question because, you know, if you work with, I don't know, if you are learning SQL and you have a Pagila database, every model knew Pagila database better than everyone else. And it's, there is nothing dangerous in sending this kind of metadata. Moreover, if we look at the um, OpenAI privacy policy, they said that they never ever send our data anywhere and they don't use it for uh, like starting learning um, oh, for their models. But uh, the, for OpenAI, Azure OpenAI, the privacy policy is even stronger. And uh, actually they even provide you the private like instance cloud where, where you can find your model and no one actually has access to this space. And that's why a lot of enterprises prefer to have Azure OpenAI uh, 
instead of just general OpenAI because they trust Microsoft more than uh, OpenAI. At the same time, Google Gemini honestly tells us that please do not submit sensitive, confidential or personal information because your data can be used for uh, uh, learning technologies in uh, Google's enterprise features, products and services. Uh, maybe it's like your payment for this free model. You know, one million of tokens, you remember. No, any other models will give you this opportunity. But yes, please do not show sens uh, the sensitive, confidential or personal data. But at the same time, if we look at this problem from the other side, we don't send any kind of data. I mean, the data itself are private. The only thing that we send is the structure of the database. So it's your choice. You can choose, uh, do you trust them? or you not, and how valuable is uh, your database schema if you want to share that with someone or you don't. So what else do we have? I listed here a few other models. Currently, we don't support them in uh, DBiver. Uh, it's a GitHub Copilot and uh, AWS Code Whisperer. And uh, for this tool, the reason why we don't support them because they don't have public API. And uh, they are integrated in uh, VS Code and uh, I believe in uh, JetBrains idea. But if you want to make your own product or use it somehow independently, it's, it's impossible. I asked uh, GitHub team uh, on AWS conference about that, why they don't have a public API. And they answer it something like, oh, you know, we don't trust it for now, so we want to spend some time. But, you know, again, it's up to you. You can trust this answer or you can believe or not. But my uh, goal here is to say that, unfortunately, they don't have, at least for now, they don't have public API. The interesting uh, thing about Llama 2 Llama 2 is an open source uh, model from uh, uh, Meta. And it means that actually you cannot just work with that. I, I mean, you cannot work it w uh, in the same way as you work with Google Gemini. You can take it, uh, you can uh, train it, and after that you can use it. And uh, currently there are, I don't know how many new startups that use Llama 2 as a basement for their uh, models and uh, for their tools. So uh, actually the first maybe and the most popular for now uh, language model is a Llama 2. And uh, Cloud 3, actually I believe no one knows who are they. And uh, I put it here because just a couple days ago I read uh, in some article that comparing with OpenAI models, they give much better result for SQL queries. Because, you know, currently, unfortunately, there are no good model uh, for SQL. They write more or less okay, like pr other programming languages like Java, or maybe, I don't know, C-sharp or others, but no SQL. Yes. <laughs> so, and, uh, but they said that Claude 3 does this work for us for SQL. So who knows? And uh, the last question is how good is AI? Can AI replace all of us in the near future? Can AI create uh, for us all uh, like queries and we will need to just leave and uh, keep it for the robots. I took the article, uh, actually it's a joint article of uh, American and Chinese uh, scientists. They also tried to create some model, but the most important thing here is the last row because they compare models with the human performance. 
And as you can see, the difference for now is, is, is huge. And it's a lot of uh, like uh, work ahead for the uh, language models developers to be closer to the human performance. So you can consider <laughs> you can consider these models as your assistant, as uh, someone who will help your maybe less experienced colleague, who someone because you know uh, uh, these models are very good for users who are not familiar with SQL but still need to work because yes uh, they can write their queries. After some, a few attempts, after some learning, you can create very complicated uh, queries with a lot of joins, like they, you can combine three, five, seven tables. You can add uh, complicated conditions. You can even write self joins with AI. So you can do a lot of things. And all of this without uh, SQL knowledge. Uh, <laughs> So yes, and uh, it's uh, very good for well-known databases like Postgres. And uh, it's a good point to start if you are learning the SQL language. And it's not necessary that you are just a student. Maybe you switched your database. Maybe you always was like, I don't know, Oracle developer, and now you work with Mongo. Do you know how to write queries to Mongo? Maybe, maybe not. And that's where AI can help you. And uh, here, the end. And I'm ready for your questions if you have them. Thank you very much. No questions. Thank you, guys. You were very good listeners. Really appreciate it. <laughs>